In this video, what we want to do is talk about reinforced concrete connections. And reinforced concrete connections uh, essentially come down to how big a rebar there is and how far it extends into the adjacent members. And so we call that embedment length, how far it's sticking into the, to the adjacent member. For, for example, I'll draw here on the screen, if I've got a column and I've got a beam that gets poured right here, um, one of the things we do is take the rebar, let's say it's uh, along the, the bottom of this member right here, and it would extend into the beam this way, and it would extend into the column that way. And so that's the embedment length that we need to think about. Um, typically, we think about the points of maximum stress and um, what, what we do with the reinforcement at the ends or the bends. These are the, the critical sections that we'd have to consider. So there's some equations that we utilize, and you won't actually have to use the equations. A uh, little bit of a spoiler alert right now. I've got some tables that you can use that embed the equations. Uh, but, but I'm showing you the equations just so that you recognize what is in the equations. You've got the strength of the steel, you've got the bar diameter, and you've got the concrete compression strength. And so um, you'll, you'll see that the equation for um, number seven or larger is a little bit different, but it's got the same basic parameters in there. Strength of steel, rebar diameter, and the compressive strength of concrete. And um, I, I note really quickly that these equations work for standard um, tensile strength, but we have a special case that we call a top bar that um, you can take these equations right here and multiply by a factor of 1.3 or a 30% increase for those special um, top bars. And um, you can see the definition of a top bar there. It's a horizontal member, so it's got to be a beam member. So if we can go back and draw a column right here. Um, the column itself is a vertical member, so that doesn't count for a top bar. But uh, if I've got a horizontal member with at least 12 inches of concrete beneath the bar, then that bar is considered a top bar, and uh, we increase it by 30%. Um, you, you typically don't have to do the math for this because I've got a, a separate table for top bars as well. All right, this is how we utilize the tables that embed the, the, those equations right there. Um, we split, this is for standard bars, note that, but we split the table into two pieces. Uh, yield strength of 60 KSI, yield strength of 40 KSI, this is the still reinforcement strength. So on a problem, I would give you one of those two. And then each of these is also split into two pieces based on the compressive strength of the concrete, either 3,000 or 4,000 KSI concrete. The final thing that we would have to do is look at what is the bar size that we're using. Simply come down the list and um, then you would, uh, using the appropriate still strength of the rebar, the appropriate compression strength of the rebar, and the appropriate bar size, you would then just jump in and pick the value. In this case, um, I've gone with 40 KSI rebar, 4,000 KSI, or sorry, 4,000 PSI st concrete, and uh, number eight bars, and it's got to have a minimum of 32 inches of embedment, or uh, it, it could pull out and uh, the, the connection could fail. This one right here is the similar table, except that it works for top bars. And uh, just as a reminder, top bars, I already defined this, they're horizontal members with at least 12 inches of concrete below the bar. And uh, it's simply the previous table multiplied by a factor of 1.3. So here's an example that we want to run through right here. This, this diagram is similar to the one I've drawn where I've got a column out here and I've got a beam right here, and I've got my rebar that is inside of both the column and the beam. And embedment length 
in the beam goes this way and embedment length in the column goes this way. So uh, using this diagram right here we've got a value of length 1, we've got a value of length 2, it's not to scale, and we've got our compressive strength of our concrete and our com yield strength of our still that are all given to us. So I've, I've broken the table down, I have to use the whole table here, but we've got 40 KSI still, we've got uh, 3000 KSI concrete, and um, I'm going to consider a number 6 bar, therefore we've got 29 inches that would have to take place uh, along here. I've also got builds built in this, but I'm circling as I'm going along. So. The embedment in the beam works because the length was 48 inches, and honestly if the column was 36 inches wide, the embedment length works there as well. That's awfully wide for a column. Um, let's look at the column as well. Oh, you know what? I, I lied right here. Uh, this particular, I didn't lie, I just didn't point this out. This particular table, uh, we got to use the top bar table because we're looking at embedment into the column. Um, when we look at the, dang it, I said that wrong. We're looking at the rebar in the beam. When we're looking at the column, on this particular chart right here, again, we need to go back and use the standard bar chart rather than top bar chart. Same values apply. 40 KSI still, 3000 KSI concrete, uh, bar size of 6, and it's got to be 22 inches into the column. I apologize about uh, getting ahead of myself and mixing those two values up, but uh, we, we do have to treat them separately. I'm, I'm going to leave the error on the video and uh, hopefully it will serve as a uh, reminder that it's very easy to mix the tables up and you got to make sure you're paying attention to which side you're dealing with. As a quick reminder of what I made an error on, the rebar in this part of the beam is considered a top bar, so I need to use the top bar table. The rebar embedded into the column over here um, uses a 30% less uh, value. It uses the standard equation, the standard table. So make sure we're on the standard bar table for that one. So 22 inches on this side, and I think it was 36. Is that the value that I had from the previous slide? So embedment in the column works as well. All right. What happens if we don't have 22 inches? Again, 36 inches is an awful lot. You know what? I don't think it's it's 29 inches. So let's erase this and go ahead and put 29 in there. 36 was the width of the column. That came from the previous uh, slide. What if we don't have a 36 inch wide column right here? What if L2 is only, say, uh, 18 inches or, or 15 inches or even 12 inches? Um, obviously, the rebar can't poke out the other side. That wouldn't do it any good. Um, it's very common for us to come in and hook the, the bar, make a, make a bend in there, make it either 90 or a hook. And so um, this particular table is the one that we would want to use for hooks and bends. So this would be right here, a, um, a, a, a 90 degree uh, bend, and this one would be considered a hook where it wraps around 180 degrees. Um, you can see the, the distances are included on these diagrams. If this bar diameter was a number 8 with uh, 1 inch, then this length right here would have to be 12 inches. And there's some other geometry that would govern how, how uh, uh, much bend goes um, into the 90 degree angle it's, as well. Uh, similarly, you can see the uh, uh, corresponding bar diameters and length that would correspond with a hook. So uh, the table runs the same way. Um, if we had 40 KSI steel, 3 KSI concrete, number 6 bar, this is using the previous example, um, then 
my uh, 90 degree bend would have to be 11 inches. And that's 11 inches clear out to there and there. And note, you'd want to leave room for cover as well. That uh, doesn't uh, account for the cover that would go on the outside of this particular um, uh, bend. Um, if you're doing a 180 degree hook, if you're using this lower model right here, then you would want to reduce um, the, the value by 30%. And so we could um, multiply that by 0 0.7. That reduces it by 30%. And um, in that case, the, the value could then be minimized to, uh, I'll just call it 8 inches. But 7.7 um, .7 inches rounded up, probably an 8-inch uh, hook would also work. Um, what about a lapped splice? A lapped splice is uh, anytime you've got long strips of rebar, and you've got to overlap them. Of course, we'd probably come in and we'd tie it together um, with, with some ties and hold it in place. But that overlap zone is called a lap splice. And for lap splice, what we do is we do 1.3 times the required length for simple development, or in other words, the standard bars. So in short, if you're doing a lap splice, simply use the top bar table. Um, lap splices are generally limited to number 11 bars or smaller. Um, uh, if, if we've got pure tension members, then we don't want to do a lap splice uh, because they'll, they'll pull out. So we'd want to weld or mechanically connect uh, the materials there uh, in a pure tension member. Uh, but, but if it's a, just a beam that's got some compression and some tension going on in there, um, we, we're, we're okay with the lap splice. Uh, one, one key is if you've got multiple layers of uh, rebar running in there, um, stagger the splicing. You, you don't want all the splicing um, to occur at uh, one location. Okay, so here, here's a quick example. This is the top bar table, as we indicated there. We've got uh, 3,000 PSI concrete and 40,000 PSI, note I said PSI instead of KSI when I use those numbers. 3,000 PSI concrete, 40,000 uh, PSI steel, and um, we're using number eight horizontal bars. So um, my lap splice would have to be 48 inches, 48 inches of overlap that would occur there. All right, final element that we want to talk about is compression reinforcement. Uh, this is pretty common when you've got uh, a maybe a footing or um, a, a column that's being poured. And we'll oftentimes stick these pieces of rebar into the lower element when we pour it and we'll leave them sticking out. And then we'll go ahead and we pour the upper uh, column over that um, element. So, so we call these dowels. And um, you, you can see if I've got some rebar running up this column right here, again, we'd probably stop at this layer with our concrete pour, but I would want to extend that rebar beyond the zone. And so when I pour the adjacent column above it, um, that uh, rebar is extending uh, into both sides of the column there. Um, the compression reinforcement helps to uh, take the load that's coming from this column right here. And rather than all that load acting as a big point on top of the column, what we're doing is we're spreading some of that load down through, transferring that load down through the system um, so that it uh, um, doesn't uh, crush the concrete right at the gap. So um, that this, it's as it notes here, it's often needed at uh, some location where the concrete doesn't have sufficient compression strength by itself. Now, concrete's pretty strong in compression, but when you're talking about big point loads coming down a column, um, again, uh, you're, you're getting loads that are too big for the localized concrete, and it's better to help spread that load across the joint. So we do that with compression reinforcement. Um, Here's the equation. Again, you won't need to use the equation. I'm just showing you that it's composed of the same sorts of stuff. 
um, steel and concrete strength as well as a function of the size of the rebar that's going in there. So here's the compression reinforcement table. Um, I don't think I noted this earlier, but these tables are available as a PDF or uh, you can grab them off this video. Either one works. Um, but but make sure you're on the right table. They're all labeled. This one is for compression reinforcement. So here we've got a uh, joint that's occurring. Um, in this particular one, we're going to assume that the column has three KSI concrete and the footing is four KSI concrete. So we'll have to consider um, the embedment length into the column separately than we do the embedment length into the footing uh, because they're different strengths of concrete. We'll also use 40 KSI steel. So I've got that part of the table ready for us. Um, 40 KSI steel, three uh, KSI concrete, bar size of five for the dowels. Um, we've got to embed 10 inches into the column. And if we run the same thing for uh, the footing, we'd only have to go eight inches into the footing because the concrete's a little bit stronger. I don't have to transfer that load nearly as far in. 